May I come in, sir? Yes, come in and roll. Have a seat. Thank you. Anirudh, tell me what is the meaning of your name? So the meaning of my name, Anirudh, uh, it means uh, it's unstoppable. Okay. And it is also the name of Lord Krishna's grandson. And my name was given to me by my grandmother. Very nice. So uh, let's begin with your education. So tell me all about your education starting from whichever class you remember. And uh, I am interested to know uh, how did you get interested in uh, various subjects that you went on to choose for your 11th and 12th? Also, I'm interested to know how you used to prepare when uh, you were in 10th and how did you prepare for your 12th board? Also, tell me if there were any difficulties in studies, how did you resolve them? Tell me about various competitive examinations that you planned to appear, how did you prepare for them, including NDA or any other competitive exam? Uh, and including SSB of course and uh, if you feel any difficulty how did you resolve it tell me about various extracurricular activities and various sports activities in which you participated in your school you will be so I started my education from class 9 uh, so ever since class 9 I was interested in uh, science and math subject and uh, physics and math were actually my strong points so uh, I in, from class 9 only I decided to uh, give more time to subjects that uh, I was not so fond of, for example, uh, social studies. So I did fairly well in class 9. I scored uh, about 84%. And uh, after that, in class 10, uh, school went online because of COVID. So I failed a little difficulty with the whole uh, online show. Uh, so, I, so I decided to make a timetable and I decided to follow it. That helped me a lot uh, to uh, keep up with uh, the syllabus for the end of exams at the end of the year. So, what was this timetable? Was it same timetable as you had in your twelfth, or was it different? If so, tell me about the timetable. So, it was a little different from uh, what I had in twelfth because uh, during online school, uh, I had a lot of time which was saved uh, because I was saving time uh, that I would usually spend on traveling to school and uh, traveling to my. Uh, so uh, I would uh, usually get up a little bit uh, late, around 7, 7 30, and uh, I would freshen up, uh, eat my breakfast, and then I would start with uh, online classes of school. Then uh, after online classes, I would uh, immediately sit down to study. Uh, I would immediately sit down to study. And uh, after that, I would take lunch around uh, 2 30. I would take lunch. And after lunch, I would uh, rest for some time, about 15 20 minutes. After that, I would sit down to study again, and about till uh, for two, two and a half hours, I would study. So, around 5 30 or 6, I would go out into my garden to uh, exercise or uh, play football or practice uh, my bowling in cricket. Uh, after that, I would uh, come back, take a shower, and then I would sit down to study again till uh, dinner time, around, uh, around 9 o'clock. And uh, after dinner, I would see what all I achieved in the day and I would plan for the next day and around uh, 11 o'clock, 11.30 hours. Okay. So continuing with uh, what you were telling about your studies, yes. So, so, so in uh, class 10, uh, we only had uh, one set of uh, offline exams that was uh, three board at the end of the year and uh, I scored uh, very well in those. Uh, I scored 93.5% and that was also converted to my uh, board percentage. So in class 11, uh, I decided to take up physics, chemistry and maths along with uh, physical education as my uh, optional subject. And uh, I took those subjects mainly because I wanted to pursue engineering uh, in the future. So um, in class 11, uh, I, made, I decided to make a new timetable because school was uh, actually going offline. So I decided to make a new timetable and here I am interested to know what did you do after passing your 10th to 11th because you might have got 2 to 3 months. Yeah. So, in those 2 to, two, two to 3 months, I actually uh, looked for some good tuitions in Delhi, good online tuitions because uh, till then COVID was still there. So, I decided to take online tuitions and I contacted my friends, I uh, talked to some of my seniors also, and uh, they gave me uh, names of a couple of teachers and I took tuitions. 
So, uh, after, so uh, coming back to my uh, education class 11, um, I decided to make a new practice because I had to adjust for uh, offline school as well. So, uh, I made a tactical and I followed a tactical. And in class 11, I did fairly okay, even though I uh, could have done a lot better. I scored about 86, 86 percent in class 11. Then uh, coming to class 12, so I uh, I still had I was following the same reason that I was doing uh, online. And in class 12, I followed my same timetable, and that led me uh, that was actually a very good timetable my efficiency in class 12 well so I so I performed very well in my board exams and uh, so uh, I scored about 92.3% in my uh, class 12 well. and uh, uh, talking about the competitive exams I uh, started with the uh, NDA first uh, NDA was the first competitive exam that I ever did uh, so to prepare for that I started preparing uh, a couple of months uh, before the written exam was uh, to be held and I uh, Purchased a book from uh, Amazon and I started uh, practicing regularly. Uh, Maths was my strong point, so I decided to uh, make it even stronger. And uh, I focused on su uh, subjects like basic history and geography just for the uh, general study part. Then uh, uh, I cleared the written exam, sir. And uh, then for preparation of SSB, I actually wanted to take uh, coaching before I went for the SSB. But, uh, since uh, I was having pre boards in school and I was very focused on uh, class 12 board exams, I decided uh, not to take uh, coaching. I spoke to uh, a couple of my seniors who had uh, given the SSB. Some of them had even gotten recommended. So I spoke to them about how the process is conducted. So coming to SSB, uh, you wanted to take some coaching. You were there in Delhi at the time. So uh, why did you go for online coaching or something if you were unable to attend? Uh, you know, so I was actually in uh, Bhopal. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I had been. Uh, in tenth, you were in uh, in tenth. Yeah. So in eleventh and twelfth, I did from uh, Bhopal. Okay. And uh, so actually, my SSB uh, dates they came at a time when I was actually in the middle of my pre board. So uh, I didn't have a lot of time to uh, think about how I'm going to uh, go about getting coaching for SSB. So I had I actually had a discussion about this. Which means that uh, till the SSB dates came, you did not do any preparation for SSB. No, sir. sir and, uh, actually, um, the preparation for SSB actually includes a lot of uh, introspection because uh, you have to see what uh, traits of your personality actually affect uh, if you want to join the outfit. So I, I would actively do that. I actually, uh, that's the time I uh, started. Thinking Right after my uh, written result, I saw for myself what kind of a skill set I have, um, what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses, how can I work on my weaknesses. And this is how I started preparing. Uh, and for the actual SSB tests, uh, I started preparing. I just gave, uh, there were uh, mock tests on YouTube. So I would give those and I would get them checked from uh, sometimes my father, sometimes uh, uh, some senior. So, uh, so I went and gave the SSB, so I got screened out in my previous attempt and uh, I actually got uh, some time to think about that and it was mainly because I, uh, during the PPD, I was not able to participate in the group as much uh, and I was very, uh, I think, uh, during the fish market situation, I got a lot of loss in the exam. So, I, I got some time to think about that and I decided to improve it, improve all my confidence. I, um, so I started, I, I actually saw that I should actually practice public speaking more because that will, uh, that will be required not just in the outdoors but in all fields. Uh, so I decided to practice on my public speaking and I took help from my sister. So you told me your father was, uh, is in the army and uh, clearly spoken English is not uh, an issue here. So what was it that you wanted to practice in public speaking? Please elaborate on that. Yes, sir. So, in public speaking, uh, usually uh, 
this happened in school days in eighth or ninth class. If I would uh, give a speech on the stage or uh, introduce uh, during events, uh, I would also have the, I would always have that little bit of uh, hesitation uh, during public speaking. So I I thought that uh, this is something I should really improve, and my sister was actually very uh, helpful in helping me improve in my public speaking. So she would uh, give me topics, I would read about the topics, and then I would just uh, stand in front of her and just speak my mind for uh, a couple of minutes. And she would uh, give me the same thing also. So uh, coming back to my competitive exam, so uh, after the SSB, I uh, slowly started focusing on the I prepared uh, for one and a half months after the board exam started. I performed uh, well in my board. And after the board exam, sir, I had uh, about uh, two to three weeks till my first uh, till my attempt of J grades. Uh, so I decided that since I won't be able to complete the whole syllabus because it's very fast and difficult to complete in uh, about three weeks. So I decided that since my maths and physics are strong point, I should build on those to get as many marks as I can. So I performed very well in my uh, math section of the things. I scored about 98 percentile, and uh, in physics it was a little less, about uh, 80 somewhere in the. So uh, I feel that I'm stressing on public speaking a little bit more because uh, that was the one area that I felt I had the most hope of improvement. Uh, otherwise, in other tests, the test, yes, definitely uh, coaching helped, and in fact uh, during the story writing, uh, in the story writing test. Uh, I felt a huge improvement in the quality of my stories because I learned how to uh, build a good story, an interesting story with uh, good content, which was missing last time. So because uh, last time during the big uh, I feel uh, I ran out of time. I couldn't complete my story. Okay. Uh, so uh, I see that you have been a good sports person as well. You played cricket. You played football. Uh, but during your SSB training, it seems that uh, you did not pay much attention to the outdoors. Was it so, or the background of uh, sports helped you in the outdoor training as well? So I would say back the background of sports definitely helped me in the uh, outdoor training. And uh, in fact, even if I wasn't able to play sports, I would just go for a run whenever I found the time. So in the evening or another morning. So uh, that made me keep physically fit. So enough. I've, ever since last night, I have always given a lot of uh, emphasis to uh, physical fitness. So I regularly have uh, everything today. So if I was to give you a challenge, uh, three minute challenge in individual obstacles, right. uh, how many do you think you will be able to? So I'll be able to complete the course and, and also repeat. I will also try to repeat the course. Yeah. Try to or would you be able to? So I will be able to. Okay, so uh, I see that you uh, have represented your school um, in uh, cricket and football. So tell me about that journey. How did you learn cricket, football, and uh, how did you grow up uh, to represent your house or a club uh, and uh, go on to play for your school? So uh, actually, I will start the story by talking about my father. Uh, my father actually motivated, motivated me to play, play on cricket. Uh, that's my first sport, and actually he used to play uh, in the school. He was a cricket team captain, and uh, people would actually people still talk about how well he used to play. So that actually motivated me a lot to take up cricket, and I decided to become a bowler. So ever, ever since I was in class uh, third, I started practicing my bowling. My father would help me practice bowling in front of the house in uh, the parking. Uh, he would set up a wicket, and I would keep bowling. Uh, that's how I started practicing cricket. And uh, when I came to class 6 in uh, Delhi, I actually found an opportunity to play cricket for the school. So I decided to try out for the team. Uh, I was selected as a bowler. And uh, after that, I started playing very well. And, uh, and after that, I also improved on my batting. So I'm, I'm actually an all rounder in cricket. I can bowl as well as back. I back at round number 3 or number 4. And I can with the new ball and swing the ball as well. Okay, so you can swing the ball. That means you have played with the leather ball. Yes, sir. Okay, so if you were to bowl an outswinger, uh, tell me if you were to teach somebody who is just trying to bowl an outswinger, how would you tell him 
that he will be able to hold an outswing. So uh, firstly for an outswinger, you need to have, uh, for any kind of swing actually, you need to have one side of the ball really shiny and one side of the ball should be comparatively old. So uh, actually the physics behind this is that to the, uh, to the shiniest side, the air travels faster so the ball uh, bends towards that side. So, uh, sorry, bends towards the opposite side. Uh, so I would uh, tell him that to practice his uh, some Come on that again, if the uh, air is travelling faster on the shiny side then the ball will turn toward the shiny side or the rough side or the comparatively rough side so it would turn towards the uh, left side it would turn towards the left side but where is the shiny side the shiny side is on the right side sir, and uh, uh, it will turn towards the where the rougher side is ok so let's talk about Bernoulli's theorem then sir. so uh, explain me the Bernoulli's theorem, what happens to a wing of an aircraft. So Bernoulli's theorem states that uh, the uh, total mechanical energy uh, of uh, an object in motion is conserved, of, a, of an object in motion in a fluid is conserved. So uh, during the motion of an aircraft, the uh, aircraft wing is shaped in such a way that air above the aircraft travels uh, faster than the air below the aircraft. Uh, so this creates a pressure difference and generates a lift that acts upward. So that is how an uh, aircraft flies. So you are saying that the aircraft wing is curved in a manner that the air travels faster over the wing and uh, slower under the wing, then creating a lift. Creating a pressure difference. So because the energy so is where is the lift creating is being created? Is naturally being created upwards yes, on sir. the faster side. Yes, sir. And if you are going to bowl out swing, you are the swing, you are at right arm bowler or left arm bowler? Right so then the uh, ball is going to swing on the left side, that is your off stop and beyond? Yes. So for the right hand. Yeah. So now which side is the shiny side? So it's uh, on the side that will uh, fall and go. Yeah. Come again. Sorry. I am not very clear. So, uh, so the shiny side uh, of the ball. Uh, if the seam will be perfect, then the ball will curve towards the shine uh, that uh, towards the side that is uh, shining. Correct. So the shiny side would be toward the off stump uh, yes. or toward the uh, first lip, and then you would be rolling an outswing. Yes. Right. Okay. So uh, let's move on to your hobbies and interests. So uh, tell me something about your hobbies and interests. On which of your hobbies you spend more time, and uh, why? So my hobbies include playing the guitar, singing and playing the keyboard. So uh, I have played music uh, ever since I was little. I have played all sorts of instruments. I actually started playing the tabla when I was very young. Uh, but I grew up with it and then I start, and then I picked up the guitar in class 6. So I started giving it a lot of time and uh, I still play the guitar. I also uh, did a course from uh, Trinity College London and I passed uh, grade, five level, uh, grade 5 exam from there. So, uh, and keyboards are I'm self taught, and my singing was uh, actually naturally it was very good, but my mother also didn't train me. So, yeah, so I have given a lot of time to uh, these hobbies. And uh, talking about my interests, so my interests include physical exercise, and uh, I exercise daily, and it is, a, uh, it is a very important part of my daily routine that I exercise. It keeps me very active throughout the day. It also my performance uh, as I go on with my Okay, you have been also uh, captain of your house cricket team, vice captain of your school cricket team. So tell me one occasion as a cricket team captain or vice captain where you had done exceptionally well. Okay. So I'll take uh, Yes. So actually a couple of instances come to mind, but uh, the most uh, vivid instance uh, is my first uh, experience as vice captain of the team, of the school team. So uh, in 2018, 2017, uh, we, uh, there was actually an uh, upcoming tournament called Adidas Surprise. It was organized by Adidas and uh, teams from all over Delhi could uh, enroll. And they had different sports and different categories like cricket, football, categories like 112, 160. 
So we decided to uh, make a team from our school and enroll in the competition for the under 16 uh, category. So uh, my captain, uh, his name was Hansen. My captain and I, we went to talk to the sports uh, sports teacher and uh, to get his permission to enroll in the tournament. Uh, but uh, sir, our sports teacher actually told us that since exams are new, uh, school won't give us permission to participate in the tournament. So we decided that uh, we'll make our team and we'll go as a separate team. Uh, even though we were the school team and so so I uh, I started uh, we uh, along with my captain Hansen uh, we started uh, shortlisting players and uh, we made a team and we enrolled the top. So uh, so in the first match that we played, uh, it was uh, to be played at uh, two thirty pm, and I arrived at the uh, match venue at two o'clock, and I and saw the, this match was going to be. An overlifted match or an innings match? So it was a uh, 10 over match. 10 over match. Okay. So, uh, so it was a uh, limited over and 5 over match. Okay, great. So uh, I went there at 2 o'clock and I saw that only uh, four of my team uh, players had uh, arrived till then. So I went and uh, talked to them uh, with the team. So they were actually stuck in traffic, the rest of our team. So uh, I decided that I'll talk to the in charges and I'll tell them. And uh, they were still stuck in traffic and they had to start the match. So I took on the responsibility of captain and I went for the toss and I picked two bad, I picked batting first because the pitch was actually, the ball was coming under, under the back very well. I got the chance to see the pitch beforehand. So uh, I picked batting first and I talked to one of my uh, juniors there and he was very good at it, he was a very good batsman. So I, I talked to him and I told him that we'll be facing the strike. And uh, which was very new to me, sir. I'm, uh, I, I usually go off the bat when the ball gets a little old. So uh, I was tackling swing bowling for the first time. So uh, I took the strike, sir. And uh, after I took the strike, our, the rest of our team arrived at the venue, but the first ball had to be bowled. So we had to continue the match. And uh, I actually played very well in that match, sir. Um, I scored about 43 runs out of the team total of uh, 92. So, and I hit the only two sixes in that match. Okay. So, and then uh, after the, our batting was over, uh, we, we picked up bowling. And since I'm a, uh, since bowling is my uh, uh, main skill, I took, I was able to take three wickets and we won the match by three runs. Oh, three runs? Yes, sir. With, an, uh, okay. With a run rate of nine, I think that was uh, pretty close. Yeah, yeah. three must have been good. Okay, so uh, let's come to uh, the news nowadays which is in Go and that is Manipur. So tell me why is Manipur facing uh, so much of violence and uh, what are your views on So uh, currently, Mani Man currently in Manipur there is a lot of violence going on between uh, the Metis and, and the other tribal communities mainly the Kuti. So uh, in the capital city of Manipur that is Infal, the Metis uh, make a majority so they are uh, very directly involved with the uh, legislation and the decision making of uh, in Manipur, and uh, the tribals feel that they are not uh, a big part of this. Uh, that is one reason, sir. Another reason is that uh, the Metis don't have a tribal status. So when Manipur was integrated to India in, I believe it was 1949. Uh, when Manipur was integrated to India, before that the Metis were actually given a tribal status. But after that, their tribal status was removed, and they felt that uh, this was unfair since the other tribes still uh, had the tribal status, and they were they uh, had the uh, privilege of uh, reservation. So uh, that also caused tension between them. Uh, uh, yes, sir. These are uh, I think the main reasons why uh, there was a lot of tension already between these groups, and uh, that is that actually led to violent uh, outbursts in Manipur. And so uh, we are actually hearing about this uh, a couple of months later from when these have happened because the situation was so out of control that uh, the government had to cut the uh, internet in Manipur to uh, avoid the spread of fake news or something. So, sir, I feel that um, it is a very complex situation that we are facing because uh, it is, uh, I won't call it a civil war, but it is, it is very much like a civil war yeah, on a very low scale. Uh, the government has actually 
Thank you.